What's up guys, Shane here from FugueNect 3D Printing and today we're gonna use 3D printing and create some connectors for PVC pipe so your kids can make some blanket forts. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys. So given the current world situation right now, everyone is pretty much stuck at home and we're all trying to figure out ways to entertain our kids. Now, one thing that every kid enjoys is a good blanket fort or a pillow fort or something like that, but you just might not have things around to be able to create that with. Well, if you can get yourself out to a home improvement store, you can pick up some very, very cheap PVC pipe. The stuff I bought here was about $1.50, just shy $2 for a 10 foot stick. That's pretty cheap. Uh, I bought, well, I don't know, 10 of them. So for about 15, 20 bucks tops to buy all those. And then a couple grams, you know, two, 300 grams of filament, depending how much you need, you can create these little connectors that I made here. Now I had to create my own because I did find a, a customizer tool in uh, Thingiverse, or on Thingiverse, I should say, it opens up in OpenSCAD and you just put in your dimensions and boom, it pops it out. Well, that's assuming that you're using US standard PVC pipe. This is not. This is very cheap and very, very much not to spec because it has very much variation in it. So I kind of had to play with that a little bit, but either way, go out, buy some PVC pipe, or you might have some laying around, and 3D print some connectors. This is gonna make a, a pretty sturdy fort from what I've seen so far. I'm very happy with it. We currently have one of those like crazy forts, which are these white balls with a bunch of different connectors on them. And then these very thin, smaller than your pinky, uh, one foot or 18 inch green post that go between it. And you can make all kinds of crazy forts and shapes and it's great for a while. Uh, but the kids are rough. And again, I have so many kids, they're rough on it. They wanna put bigger blankets on it. The little ones don't know how to use it and the big ones like it, it just doesn't work out. So I need something that is still modular. I can build kind of whatever shape I want out of it. And two, being very, very sturdy. And that's why I chose some simple PVC pipe. So you know what you need for this. You're gonna need the PVC pipe and these models, but again, maybe this doesn't fit what you need. So I'm gonna take you into Fusion 360 right now. I'm gonna show you in about five or six minutes how you can easily create these different connectors. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this designing in Fusion 360, and I see here I already have two of these completed. So this is, I'm calling this like a 90 degree corner. So this is what would go like up in the corners and then have one post that's actually end up being downwards for like the legs of the fort. And then I have over here a simple T connector as well. And I did actually model up, but when I originally made this first one, I just kept off this top post. And I went ahead and just exported like that just to have a 90 degree. So like like the doorway or whatnot. You can make this kind of however you want. But I'm going to run through real quick on how I made this and how I made it very, very easy to print with no support. It's very strong. So we're going to go ahead and create a new design. I'm going to do a new sketch. I'm going to write in the middle. And then we're going to make the circle. So I'm going to make this 32 millimeters. This doesn't really matter as much, but it kind of gives me a frame of reference for the actual whole project. I guess I don't really have to do it, but again, it's just for me, it, it makes my mind work a little bit better. I'm going to go up here to create. We're going to go to sphere. We're going to click on that circle and then we're going to click right in the middle of that circle and it pops automatically to 32 millimeters. Again, you could just create a circle there, but whatever. All right, so now we have our base circle. Now this is going to be what we're going to call like the joint between two pieces of conduit. We now need to make our, you know, connectors, the actual shafts to go on that. I'm going to create a new sketch. Because we made that sphere right there at the origin, we can click anywhere we basically want to. So if we're looking at the front here, we're going to go ahead and click here. So this is the front of it. We're going to do circle. We're going to click right on that center again. Now this is what's going to change for you, depending on the size of conduit you're using. The one that I'm using, 41.43. Sorry, 21.43 ends up being a very good size. It's snug, but not real tight. So basically my kids can take it apart, but yet if they're moving it around, hanging things on it, it's not going to come apart. So we're going to finish that sketch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at it that way. I need to turn this. Okay. We're going to go ahead and extrude that. And we're going to extrude that 41 millimeters. And I'm going to do change this to join. And that's going to make our first piece. Now that 41 is basically 
I want this to be, let's see if we do a line, we'll do it all right here. And if I go from there out, it is 29 millimeters. And that's what I want. I want to be able to have this to be long so that it goes into the piece of conduit a fair bit of ways. It's just my personal preference. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make that uh, original uh, triple 90, basically that corner. We're gonna go ahead and do a new sketch. We're gonna click on this profile now. So we have one going this way. We're gonna do circle. We're gonna do your measurement again, so 21.43 for me, okay? I'm gonna finish the sketch, extrude this 41 millimeters, change it from a cut to a join, and hit OK. All right, so now we have basically our 90 degrees. So right here, you're good to go putting two pieces together right off the bat. We got one more to make, another one. Now we're gonna do this from the top. We're gonna do it on, make sure you click into profile or the actual, the uh, origin plane so that you get this dead in the center. 21.43, extrude. Make sure you select that inner circle, not the outer one, Shane. I'm going to extrude that inner circle there we go uh, 41 change it from a cut to a join hit okay and there we have our corner piece now i'm going to go ahead and put a fillet on these so you press f go ahead and click the three of these and i ended up doing a 2.5 millimeter i think i did no i did a five millimeter five millimeter fillet is what i did on mine and then you have a connector now this isn't very easy to 3D print and that you know is a problem. We need this to be easy to 3D print and not need any support, but yet be strong for most of the way. I mean, we can't make this perfect unless you print one of these pegs separately, but we'll get close to it. So we're gonna up here to modify and we're gonna go ahead and do split body. We're gonna select our body and then our splitting tool is going to be this plane, which is gonna be the XY plane basically. So we're gonna split it right on there. We're gonna hit okay. And now we have two bodies. Now, if I go ahead and slap on a color on here, you'll be able to see the two bodies a little bit easier. So there's one body and then there is the other body. So whenever you go to actually print this, they both have a flat surface and just takes a little bit of CA glue and you have them joined. Now, how are you going to do that? You're going to go ahead and you can export this as two separate bodies. So you could right click on this body, hit save as STL and do that. If I would do that, if you're using anything other than Prusa Slicer, just because I don't know how to split models in other ones, but in Prusa Slicer I do. And since I printed this on my Mark III S, I'm going to do it on there. And so I've already done that. Let's go over to Prusa Slicer. All right. So I'm in Prusa Slicer. I'm going to go ahead and add a model. I'm going to select my model which is the 90 degree corner, open that up, and there it is. Now, if you look up at the top of Proof Slicer, you have this split into objects or split into parts. We wanna split this into objects. We want this to be two separate objects. You click that and boom, there it goes. It looks all kind of funky. Hit arrange, and there it is. You've got one one way and one the wrong way. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the wrong one, reorient it to be down, rearrange, and there you have your two halves printing. So if you look, two of your axes, one and two, are gonna be very, very strong because they are being printed against the layers or with the layers, I should say, so it makes them stronger. This top peg is weaker because it is printing with them. So meaning the force is gonna be pushing down on a weird way. So what I plan on doing is this peg here, I'm going to have this be go facing downwards. So it's supporting the leg. So the weight is being held on the ball here and not being pushed against any of the grain, basically, of the print. The ones that's against the grain is gonna be these two, which is great because it will be cross, and then it's gonna be the strongest orientation it can be. Now, there are other ways to make these, but this is the way that I found to be the simplest, that needed no support, they print pretty fast, and they work out really, really well. So let's go back, see how we assemble these, and 
see the final product. That was pretty simple, right? It doesn't get much easier than that. You can print these, no support, and they can be very strong. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna link my actual Fusion 360 files down below that you can download the project, and all you have to do is go in there and change the diameter of these pegs, and it'll work out for you. And you could also make this ball smaller or bigger, the connector, however you seem fit, but you can at least use my sketch to get yourself off to the race, or again, follow this quick tutorial I just did for you, and in less than 10 minutes, you can go ahead and have these connectors modeled and ready to 3D print. Now, once you get them 3D printed, what are they gonna look like? So they're gonna look like this. They're gonna come in two pieces. Uh, this was printed in uh, some Prusament PLA, their gray PLA, it's got little sparklies in it. It's just what I had laying around and it's good stuff. And so you have these printed. All you have to do is stick them together and you can use them, honestly, you could use it without glue, but that's very ill-advisable. So what I say to do is you take these two flat pieces, put a little bit of CA glue in the middle, run a little bead down each of these, put them together and get two pieces of PVC pipe and put it on each of the pegs just like that and let this dry for you know, I don't know a minute or two with that, uh, with that glue. So for the T's has all three of these are split. So putting this on either side here only does so much. I went ahead and used a clamp to do the last part just because I didn't bring a third piece of uh, pipe in here with me. And that worked out just well. Again, just wanna keep it clamped, make sure that it gets down there well. And once it dries, you're good to go. So within one day, I was able to model and test out a few of these. I had to do, I think I did four until I got a generally good fit across several different pieces. Some are a little bit looser, some are a little bit tighter, like this one piece here is a little bit tighter tolerance than this piece right here, which slides on tightly, but easily. My kids could be able to do that, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Something that's nice and snug, but easy enough for a child to take off, my oldest being 10. So again, your results may vary, but either way, do some testing. Uh, I've, each round of these, which I can fill the build plate up with, I think six or seven connectors on the Prusa i3 Mark III S, and that takes about six hours to do at 0.3 millimeter layer height. So I'm doing this very rough draft, um, I'm doing it with four perimeters and 20% info. I want these to be robust. I want them to last because again, kids are rough with stuff. Like no one's easy here. So that should be able to do that pretty easily. So within a day, you can have a couple dozen connectors done if you're a big printer, even shorter time than that. And you'll be able to have them doing this. So I want to put this together and check it out. And I'll show you guys some snips here of what it looks like. And I'm very, very pleased with how these came out. And again, you can make these any size you want. You can change them up. I just add the fillets just to keep things rounded over. Again, these are children using these. I don't want sharp edges on anything. So it just works out so much easier that way. Oh, and you can also make your actual post any length you want. I made my main, you know, the walls to be four foot. And then I made all of the interconnecting pieces inside of there three foot. I could have went down to two or one if you really want to go crazy modular. But again, I didn't want to spend all that time modeling different ones or printing out dozens of these. I have, you know, a few T's, a few 90 corners, and a few just straight up 90's here, which are right here uh, for like the doorway. And that's all I need. It's good to go. So you can always do more, but you know, have fun with it, learn something. Get yourself busy, keep your kids busy in this time. Everyone's trying to find something to do. And this is just one little thing that I'm doing to try and keep my kids a little more busy. That's it guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope this inspires you to do something different. And if you do make some of this, make sure you go down below. You'll see a bunch of my uh, social media. Tag me on Twitter, tag me Instagram or Facebook. Let me see what you guys are making with either this or something else that you've decided to just go ahead and create while you're stuck at home. Thanks for watching guys. If you wanna stay tuned what's going on, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. You get notifications when I do live streams or upload new videos. If you wanna help me out financially, help me do projects, build 3D printers and whatnot, become a patron. When it takes a dollar, get access to my Patreon feed and access to the after show. Other ways you can help out, there's some one-time donation links or a bunch of fit links down there that you guys can use to save yourself some money and a little slice of what you buy as it come back to me and save you money. A lot of those have some discount codes associated with them. Make sure you check all that out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, happy printing.